What's up everybody? Welcome to Florida. We're going to talk about 10 warnings, 10 things you need to know before you buy a house here in Florida. The number one thing you need to know if you're buying a house here in Florida, of course the first thing you're going to think about is hurricanes. What do we do with hurricanes? How bad are hurricanes? Well, the first thing you should know is that the media really blows these things out of proportion. And it's not really as bad as the media would want to portray these things. So if you're worried about hurricanes, it's really simple. You have a savings, you have an emergency fund. When there's a hurricane, you board up your house and you go on vacation for two weeks. It's that simple. It's not as bad as the media portrays it. Yes, you're gonna have damages from a hurricane, but guess what? Everywhere you live is going to have some type of natural disaster may it be a hurricane may it be a tornado just about everywhere you live is going to have a different type of hazard and in florida we have hurricanes the media likes to blow these things totally out of proportion because they need somebody to watch their channels one real simple way to gauge if you're going to have to worry about hurricane damages previous damage has the property already had hurricane damage in the past and that includes flooding so what you do is you talk to the neighbors Look at the property you're going to buy, talk to the neighbors, hey, during Hurricane Irma, how high did the water come? What hurricanes came through this community? How high did the flood levels come during the last hurricanes? And that'll give you an indication of what to expect in the future. So when you're buying a house at the end of a golf course, you're and the wind comes straight at you during a hurricane, you're going to have a lot of damage. However, if your house is like in a little hole, let's say there's big trees all the way around, your house is kind of like in a hole. You'll see a lot of that like in Ocala where there's a lot of trees and stuff like that. Your house is naturally protected. But if your house is at the end of a golf course and it's like a one mile straight shot looking at your house, that's really bad during hurricanes. And it's areas like that where you can get a lot of damage. Places like Cape Coral, Lehigh Acres, that are nice and open. There's not a lot of tree cover. The hurricanes destroy those places. Other areas like the Golden Gate Estates, even if they get hit really hard by a hurricane, there's a lot of tall pine trees and it's really hard for the hurricanes to really do a lot of damage in places like that. Number two is sinkholes. While it's nice to be on the water, you don't want to be in the water. And in Florida, we have these things called sinkholes. If you're not familiar with a sinkhole, basically your house will end up in the middle of a pond like this. The ground just swallows, disappears, and your house goes into the ground. There's an area of Florida around Ocala, Orlando, Polk County, Pasco, Hernando. This is called the sinkhole alley. The only thing that you have to do is go online and find a sinkhole map and you're going to see little ridges, areas that have the most sinkholes. While they're completely unpredictable, you can look at a sinkhole map and you can almost get an idea of what areas are more likely to get them and what areas are a lot less likely to get them. So if you're worried about sinkholes, all you have to do is go on the internet and find a sinkhole map and that'll give you a great indication of where you can find sinkholes. Number three. If you're buying a house, you're probably going to want to do, get something done around the property. Maybe uh, pavers, maybe roofing, maybe an addition, maybe some remodels. You're going to want to do something to your new purchase, your new home. You're going to do something. You're going to need to hire a contractor. For some reason, contractors in Florida, or probably in general, are extremely crooked people. And there's a few scams that I want to warn you about. Then the first scam that I want to warn you about contractors is the roofing contractor. So since we have hurricanes, we have a lot of roof damage. And with that roof damage, you get some really crooked contractors. What they do is they take a deposit, like after Hurricane Irma, a roofing contractor would approach you and they would make you sign a contract. They would deliver the materials, but they didn't have the time or the employees to do that job right away. But now you have bought the materials, they're sitting on your property, and now you're tied into a contract with this company who is not going to be able to get to you for about a year and a half. So all they're doing is locking you into a contract that is very dangerous. You need to establish exactly when they're going to finish their job in their contract unless there's some type of permitting issue which could delay it. But this is a very serious concern with contractors. Then you have the undocumented laborers, which a lot of companies use them, landscaping companies, Anything that's really hard labor, demolition crews, they're not going to have the possibility to even find U.S. citizens that want to do these jobs. You're, you might end up with an illegal immigrant working on your property. When you hire a contractor, make sure you know exactly who's going to be on my property. How long has this towel guy been with you? 
the guy that's doing the cabinets, who is he? How long has he been with you? Know who's going to be on your property, what they're going to do. If your contractor doesn't have answers to exactly who's going to be working on your property, he may just be subcontracting other people and you can really run into a world of trouble. Gets you to sign a contract and now you're locked in with them and you decide to go with somebody else or do something else or not finish working with them, they'll put a lien on your property. Yes, they will. So please watch out in Florida for crooked contractors. Make sure you know exactly who's going to be on your property, what they're going to do. Ask a lot of questions and maybe even get some client referrals. And make sure that those client referrals are actually real clients and not somebody that's uh, in on it with them. Because there's a lot of crooked contractors. All right, number four, Realtors. Realtors give fake tours. Please watch out for these pushy YouTube channel having realtors that are trying to sell you some type of dream. Be careful. These realtors are not going to tell you what the communities are really like. They're going to sugarcoat everything. They're pushy. And all they want is to sell you a house. If they can sell you a $300,000 house instead of a $200,000 house, that's a $6,000 profit more that they make. So please make sure that you don't fall with these pushy contractors trying to push you into a house that's outside of your price range or trying to not tell you the truth about a neighborhood. Don't fall for these YouTube channel having realtors. They're a bunch of scams. They're trying to sell you a dream. They'll show you the nice side of a town, but they won't show you a block away what's really going on in that neighborhood. So please look out for realtors. Don't believe these realtors. Remember, realtors give fake tours. All right, number five is the septic switchover. A lot of communities in Florida have just been built really fast. They haven't really put in the infrastructure. They just put in these communities. And eventually, you have to upgrade to a city water system. You may have to do with a septic tank on the property, which is okay, really. But eventually, that septic tank is no longer going to be up to code to the county. And the city or county, wherever you're in, may force you to upgrade into the city. You're going to have to hire a contractor, get rid of your old septic tank. That could cost you into the thousands of dollars. So if you're buying a property that has a septic, make sure that they're not trying to make you upgrade. Make sure you understand, is it on city or is it on septic? If it's on septic, just know that you may have to upgrade to city. And if you're comparing prices, make sure that you factor into the prices if a property is on septic. If it's on septic, they need to know where that septic tank is. And usually if it's older than 15 years, it may be a good idea to consider even the price of renewing that into your home price since it's actually uh, really common for these systems to fail. A lot of times when people are buying houses in Florida, they're buying them in the wintertime. And these septic systems don't usually give you trouble until the summertime when there's a lot of rains. So make sure you fully understand the whole septic tank systems. And if you're buying a property that has a septic tank, will you be forced to upgrade into city? Number six, flooding. In Florida, it floods just about everywhere. And again, just like hurricanes, the only way to actually know if an area floods, it's not the flood maps, it's none of the, what the realtor or the homeowner tells you. It's to actually talk to the neighbors in the community and find out if that community floods, when was the last time it flooded, and how bad does it flood. And if it floods, does it destroy your property? If the street gets four inches of water once or twice a year, that's just part of living in Florida. People from other places that don't have flooding don't really understand what flooding is about. They think if the street gets two inches of water, it floods, I can't buy a house here. No, there's million dollar communities that flood. The problem isn't does the community flood, it's does the water damage property. If the street floods or the neighborhood floods and it doesn't cause any property damage, the water recedes and goes away, then there's no concerns. But if these floods cause damage to properties, destroy homes, flood homes, that's when you got a problem. And again, it floods everywhere in Florida, so don't be afraid of flooding. Just understand, does the flooding cause property damage and does it distort your life? If the neighborhood floods for five days in a row, that could definitely be a game changer. But if it just floods one day and then the water recedes, that's absolutely normal in Florida. Number seven. Ooh, it's hot out here. We are in Florida. Number seven is building materials. This isn't Wisconsin. This isn't Minnesota. This is Florida. As you can see, I've been out here for five minutes or seven minutes, and I'm already sweating. It's hot. It's insanely humid. We get a lot of rain. We get natural disasters. This is not Wisconsin. This is not Minnesota. This is Florida. In Florida, you need to buy a concrete block house 
OSB may be acceptable up north. Whether you're building something once you buy a house, let's say you want to put in a shed or you're going to remodel your house or you're buying a house, this is Florida. Do not buy a log cabin home. Do not buy something that's built out of OSB plywood. You need to buy a concrete block structure. This is not the north. This is the south. It's humid. We have cockroaches. We have bugs. We have termites. We have ants and a thousand things that will destroy your property. Make sure that whatever property you buy, the building materials are adequate for Florida. Number eight, avoid contrast neighborhoods because you're gonna pay a lot of money and you're gonna be in real proximity to crime. Here in Florida, we have what we call contrast neighborhoods. These are neighborhoods where on this block is beautiful and then the next block is the straight up hood. You don't want that. You want a house out in the suburbs or in an area that is predominantly nice. Stay away from these contrast neighborhoods. The prices are way too high. If you're going to pay a lot of money for a house, you don't want to deal with crime. You don't want to deal with inner city stuff. If you're paying a lot of money for your house, don't buy in a contrast neighborhood. These are places are really common along St. Petersburg, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. You don't want to end up in one of these contrast neighborhoods. You want to end up in an area that for a five to 10 mile range is all nice suburbs, all new buildings. Avoid these contrast neighborhoods. You're gonna pay a lot of money and you're gonna to have to end up dealing with inner city stuff If you're somewhere out in the suburbs or a little bit further out You won't have to deal with the crime and you won't have to get overcharged for your property Number nine is ghost communities. What is a ghost community? It's a community that even though it's exists in, in in a physical state this community exists But it doesn't really exist a really good example is Citrus Springs. It's a really nice community by the way but they are what you call a ghost community. They have a civil association. When you drive to the building, it's actually, it, it, the grass is overgrown. There's not really a civil association. And these ghost communities are developed by, they're large developed communities, and they have civil associations and HOAs and all these rules that are really not being enforced because there's nobody to enforce them. There's no real clear direction of it. Is it a city? Is it a, un, uh, uh, usually these are undeveloped, un, What's what I'm looking for? Undeveloped. Undeveloped and unincorporated areas that are not really part of a city. They're not really, there's no direction. That means that the roads, if the roads get cracked, who fixes them, who knows? If the ditches flood, who fixes it, who knows? They're really communities that have absolutely no direction. They're not a city, they're not anything. They're just a place. They're unincorporated. For the most part, you can get really good deals in these places, but just keep in mind, if you move into one of these ghost communities that don't have an active civil association, or they have one, but no, nobody knows who's even in charge of it, make sure if you're buying in one of these places that you're aware that if the road cracks, nobody's gonna fix it. If the street floods, nobody's gonna fix it. And there's really no direction to these communities, so there may not be any future growth. Just because it's all new houses doesn't exactly mean that this community is going the right way. These places allow developers to come in and build a lot of new houses and then you eventually think it's going to become a city and they're going to build family dollars and they're going to build shopping malls. Nothing of that happens. The only thing that ever really comes in are the Dollar, to dollar Trees, Dollar Generals and gas stations and nothing else happens in these communities. They become, even though they're brand new houses, they become absolute slums in the long run and your appreciation is not even going to exist. So avoid these ghost communities. Uh, examples would be some parts of Lehigh Acres. Lehigh Acres already has over a hundred thousand people and they're still not a city. You want a place like Cape Coral where there's a defined direction. This is where we're going with the city. This is where this development is going. So avoid these ghost developments where they put the roads, they start building houses, but there's no quite direction in which place it's gonna go. These places get filled up with people and in real in reality you don't even know if these people are going to be good people or bad people, where they're going to be coming from, what problems they're going to bring, watch out for ghost communities where they build the roads but uh, and they build the houses, but what about everything else? Number 10, avoid speculation. Yes, when you're buying a property and the realtor or the homeowner is telling you, this community is going to be worth so much money in the future. Avoid speculation. If it was really going to be worth so much money in the future, then why are you selling it? Do not buy a property based on speculation. 
I've done that and it's proven to be a horrible mistake. Don't ever buy a property for speculation. Buy the property for what it's actually worth. The structure you're getting, the community that's already there right now. Do not buy a property based on speculation. Also, a lot of times speculation is already contributed. Like for example, some parts of Miami, are all the, the speculation price is already into the package do not buy a property based on speculation go back to bang for your buck the entire state of florida is going to fill in people from california are fleeing people from new york are fleeing and they're coming here to florida the entire state of florida is going to get filled in you want to get bang for your buck you want a nice natural setting a house on a little hill with a nice view that's the type of thing you want don't buy a property based off speculation do not buy with a view of the future buy with a view of right now it's a property rentable right now can i get a vacation rental in here right now is this property in an area that i like right now am i satisfied with this community right now if the property is tanked right now would i want to own this property at this exact moment don't buy with a view to speculation buy with a view to what's in front of you right now and you're going to avoid a lot of pitfalls with buying in florida Subscribe.